G'day, and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time, we're going to talk about thrusters. You can see the devastation around me, and that's because I tried a whole lot of different ways to test the power that thrusters have, and how many blocks they can lift, and they all ended somewhat poorly. Space Engineers physics not so reliable as it turns out. I tried to make a rig that could have each thruster type attached where we could find out how many different block types that could lift, but that went out the window when I ended up with a small hydrogen thruster that was lifting 12 refineries. Until I reloaded of course, at which point everything just exploded as it hit the ground. So what useful tips do I have about how to design a ship in survival with the right number of thrusters? This time for the testing, we're not actually going to be in survival. In creative, we don't have to worry about fuel, so we'll take that element out of the picture and out of our calculations. Now let's get on to working out how many of these dang thrusters we need. How many do we need to build into our design so that we don't end up with something that's strapped to the ground when we're finished? And in survival, that's a bit more important because unlike creative, it's a bit harder to add in those thrusters once you've got your armor on. So. My recommended approach is to build the core of the ship, like we did in the large ship design series, and then try and lift the ship off the ground with just the core components in. So if we hop in the cockpit and we bring our HUD back up, we can see that I've got all of our lifting thrusters off at present and they're all listed along our hot bar. If we unlock the landing gear and then activate these one at a time and see if we can lift off the ground, we'll find out how many of them are actually needed to lift. So we can lift the core of this ship with just three of our thrusters. That means we've got the thrust of three small hydrogen thrusters remaining in reserve for our armor blocks to be added. Now, that's all well and good, but how do we know how much armor we can add? That's where this weird looking line of ships comes in. Since there's so many different blocks in the game, I thought I'd just stick with light armor blocks for this demonstration. And hopefully that will be of use to you guys, at least when you're designing your industrial ships. When you're building your military ships, you're probably going to want more thrust than just enough. You're probably going to want an excessive amount, so armor shouldn't really be a problem and how much thrust you have shouldn't be as much of an issue. So what we have here is each individual type of thruster with close to the minimum, minimum number of support blocks that we'd require. So thrusters in each direction, just smalls, enough power and a gyroscope. In the case of a small atmospheric thruster, that is not enough to lift it off the ground. So we'll add another one. And then to find out the zero point for where this can just barely lift, we hop in the cockpit and with two of them, yep, we're just barely lifting. And that's with a nice 60 blocks of armor on top of it. I chose this testing method because all the other ones I tried, well, they did not work. Space Engineers has some odd physics when it comes to the interaction between gyroscopes, how much you can lift, and thrusters. And despite there being supposedly simple mathematical ways to work out how much we can lift, none of them really seem to work in a consistent manner when you were near that borderline of how much you can lift. So I also figured that if we visually have a demonstration of how many blocks we can put on that might be useful because realistically when we get up to these larger ones that's a lot of blocks we're probably not going to be counting them out so having an idea in your head of yeah that looks like about that much that looks like about 600 blocks that'll be potentially useful at least i think i'm going to find this useful for my future builds and hopefully have fewer that can't lift off the ground so we had our small atmospheric thruster and we had to add a second one and a whole bunch of blocks to balance it. So how much can one thruster lift 
if it doesn't have to lift the cockpit and all this other rubbish? Well, turns out that it can lift about 75 light armor blocks. In the case of the large atmospheric thruster, we can see it's got a whole lot more and it can lift somewhere close to 800 light armor blocks. So if you've got a spare one of them, you should be able to clad a fairly sizable ship in light armor without having any troubles with lifting off the ground. And we can show that this one does still lift even with all that crazy amount on board and could possibly take even a little bit more. But every time I tried to do that, half the time when I loaded the game, it would crash into the ground. So we're stuck with somewhere around 800. Now, that's good for atmospheric thrusters. Those things are actually quite powerful within atmosphere. Ion, on the other hand, is not. This thing with a single ion thruster doesn't move at all. We have to add another six extra lifting thrusters if we want small ion thrusters to be able to lift even the most basic of ships. And we can see even with that many, it struggles to move. So, not your best atmospheric option. Saying that though, large ion thrusters, if you've got access to the platinum, which unless you've made it up into space, you won't, they're actually not that bad. You could theoretically use them as a bit of support thrust while you're in atmosphere, because a large ion thruster manages to lift about 160 blocks of light armor per large ion thruster, which isn't a lot when you compare it to the 800 of the large atmospheric thruster, but it's still something decent. And then we move on to the real powerhouse of the bunch. Hydrogen. These things can lift a lot. Even a small hydrogen thruster. This thing can lift about 170 blocks just with one extra hydrogen thruster. So that means the three extras that we have over on our talisman ship from the large ship series, those three can add an extra, what is it? Three times 170, that's uh, 510 blocks. That's quite a lot of extra armor. So we'd be pretty safe to even cover that thing in armor more than I did. And then the big mama, the large hydrogen thruster. There is no way I would ever count out the number of blocks that this thing could carry as I'm building them. If I've got a spare one of these, I'm just gonna go nuts. I'm gonna add whatever armor I like and pretty good chance it's gonna be able to lift it because the large hydrogen thruster can carry over 1200 light armor blocks on its own. It lifts 600,000 or more kilograms of material at sea level. We can see that the weight of this ship is over 1.2 million kilograms and it can still lift. Barely, but it can still lift. And that's with just two large hydrogen thrusters. If you've got the fuel, these things can produce a mountain of thrust. And then we move on to the small ships. These, you're probably less likely to need to look into this info because it's often much easier to add extra thrusters to small ships, or at least the way I design them, it tends to be. So we'll just go through these in a very quick sense. With the small atmospheric thrusters, these can lift somewhere around oh, 330 blocks, I think that works out to be, per atmospheric thruster. And the large ones, these can lift a stupid 1,400 smaller, uh, small ship light armor blocks. Much like the large grid, the small grid ion thrusters are nigh on useless in atmosphere. And if we have a look, we actually need even more of them to be able to lift these things. That's 11 ion thrusters just to lift the most basic of ships. The large... Ion thrusters, again, sort of useful, 
can lift all of that, which is about 70 light armor blocks, plus the cockpit and all the other bits. So you could use that. It might work. If you pair those large ion thrusters with some atmospheric thrusters, you could probably get a decent ship going that would be capable of moving both in atmosphere and out, and potentially be able to transition between a planet and space without using any hydrogen at all. And then again, the hydrogen thrusters, these things are super powerful. Even with just two small hydrogen thrusters, you can lift all of this. And that means each hydrogen thruster on a small grid, and just the small ones, they can lift about 400 light armor blocks, or about 8,000 kilos each, which is pretty impressive. And then you got this ridiculous looking thing with this enormous cube that's got over 1,600 blocks, and it can still actually move reasonably well. So, if you need power, hydrogen's your way to go, if you can carry the fuel. If you're wanting to move around in atmosphere, you're not really going to be using small ion thrusters. Those things are worthless. Now, if we wanted to make any additions to a ship that we've already got, and we didn't have enough thrust on our core, it's a lot easier to add an extra thruster with the ship in this state. I can easily bring down an extra bit of... Uh, extra bit of conveyor from here and pop another hydrogen thruster on this side pop another one equally on the other side that's a lot easier to do than after we've got all of this on I'd have to decide where I'm going to pluck it out from and then shape around it and redo a whole lot of stuff whereas if we figure it out at this point that we don't have enough lift to apply that armor then it's a lot easier to fix it so that's why I recommend building the core out making sure it's functional checking how many extra thrusters you have and how many you think you might need for your armor and even once I've armored this ship if we pop into the cockpit on this one you can see there is actually enough thrust to have one of the thrusters not on and it will still lift slowly but it will still lift so we could even add more to this and it would still technically be capable of lifting but it's always nice to be able to lift just that little bit faster so there you have it, a little bit of a guide on thrusters and a bit of a visual guide on how much they can carry. I will be putting this world up on the workshop if any of you actually want to take a look, but more importantly in the description I'll have the numbers of armor blocks per thruster and approximate weights that they can lift at sea level on a 1G world. That may be useful to you, particularly as when a ship is under construction, even if you don't have a cockpit, you can go to one of these control panels, click on it, go to your info screen and see your grid mass. That is accurate. And then you know how many thrusters you would need to lift that grid, in theory anyway. There is a website that's from an older version of the game that might be helpful in terms of estimating your thruster numbers, but I'd still recommend going about building those thrusters onto the core part of your ship first, testing them as we went through, just to make sure that you are actually gonna be okay. Because as we saw at the beginning, these things don't quite work out like we expect. There's still more tutorials to come, so I'll see you then.